this one's a little bit spontaneous, but I think it's important. Um, and the main theme really is, I guess, consumer rights. I want to talk about incompetent companies. Um, now, companies obviously is a very broad reaching idea. Um, a company could be a small company or it could be a big multinational conglomerate. But generally, when we talk about companies, businesses, these are sort of overlapping terms. Uh, we're thinking about organizations, another term that kind of provides some sort of public service. At least that's what I mean when I'm talking about it. Um, this is kind of an open question. I, I don't understand why companies that have such a bad reputation um, don't change or why they um, don't take on board criticism that will help them if they did take it on board. Um, I've had the misfortune of dealing with a few very difficult companies that are just incompetent. Um, and you know, it sort of feels like a David and Goliath situation because if you do everything in your power to put forward correspondence and you're polite and you're fora and you do everything that you're meant to do, and then they don't even have the decency to reply to an email, or they make it very difficult to get in touch with them, then it's I'm thinking, well, what's your purpose? Why are you serving as a as a public company? You know, if you if you've no interest in helping the public, um, there's a number of companies that uh, you know, as soon as they want something from someone, they will you know send threatening letters and follow up, but when people are trying to get assistance from them as something that they market that they are all about and you just end up hitting big walls it's it's infuriating i think for me one um one big uh, detrimental point is when communication is just void when when you send emails when you try to get in touch phone numbers etc all they do is give more bureaucracy they don't respond to emails they give you a dozen different extension numbers and you're just trying to sort something out it's infuriating i mean do these people not live in the real world um do they not understand from a customer's point of view and the thing is it's probably not any individual's fault but it's like a collective culture at the company in question um so i'm, I'm going to name a few examples here and Everything I'm saying is absolutely the truth. The truth. I, I'm a strong believer in consumer rights. I believe that if people feel let down, they should have the freedom of speech to say so. In terms of libel and so on, um, you know, people obviously need to be careful what they say. But if people are telling the truth, then it shouldn't be a situation where they fear repercussions. There was a recent incident. Um, and I must admit, it's played a little bit on my mind because it made me think about what the situation is in this country regarding libel law and so on, which I know very little about, so I'm not going to get into, you know, I know a minimal amount about that. But the case kind of played on my mind, and it was this. Uh, a man who um, went to solicitors for some sort of uh, building dispute, which started off as he'd lost £200, which is it's money, it's, you know, a fair bit of money. Unfortunately, the situation ended up with him owing them £25,000 because of uh, libel. Now, what happened was he made a complaint on the review website Trustpilot. Um, and this was for uh, solicitors called Summerfield Browns. Um, now, he complained that they were a scam company. That they never responded to his correspondence that uh, they were wasting his time and basically laid into them right now subsequently uh apparently they had far fewer solicitations people didn't go to them and they blamed this negative review so they decided to bring this guy to court for defamation basically and the judge not only sided with the solicitors but he lambasted the man in question who was living in sweden he's a british citizen but he was living in sweden uh, he couldn't attend the court appearance in person, but he ended up having, you know, getting a fine of £25,000 to pay out to this company on the grounds that they had lost business. Now, my response to that was, 
it basically came down to his word against theirs. And the judge, and I have to say the Times newspaper, they took the side of the judge and the solicitors. They claimed this guy was being, um, you know, uh, devious, or I forget the exact words to use. But they basically sided with the judge and with the solicitors. They said, if people are allowed to write negative reviews without um, consequence, then, you know, it can destroy businesses and it's fine for, you know, they could afford to take them to court, but smaller businesses can't. Well, my response is on a review website, if someone is trashing your business and it's unfair, like they're saying false things, well, then you should have the right to respond to that. But that should be sufficient. I'm very uncomfortable with this idea regarding that case that someone is punished effectively for just criticizing a company. And the irony of this is they claimed that they had lost business as a result. But what sort of message does that send out? It sends out a message, if you criticize us, we will sue you. So, you know, what's to say that um, other people haven't had a similar experience and they, you know, are kind of bullied into silence because this is what happens. I think it's, it doesn't make them look very good. It makes them look quite um, vengeful. And it, it's just their word against his. He responded again on Trustpilot saying, everything he said is true. Now, I don't know if it is or not, but Trustpilot then found themselves in this position where, um, you, you know, they were defending freedom of expression. But they legally had to bring the review down. I think it was a court order. That case, you know, it wasn't widely publicized. It's just something I came across in, a, in an article, but I find it quite troubling because the implications are if you criticize a certain company, you'll end up having to pay out a massive fine. But what if the criticism is sincerely felt? So what rights do consumers have? If I go to a business and I feel that um, they have taken my money and I haven't got my money's worth in return, or they're incompetent by not responding to me, what, what power do I have in order to, you know, warn other people or say, look, this is how they operate and don't trust these people because they'll pick you through this. Um, it's quite concerning, actually. I think if you're a business, you should have the self-confidence to be able to defend yourself without bringing someone to court. Um, so maybe some of the things he said was a bit reckless, accusing them of being a scam company, for example. But he says that they didn't respond to any of his emails. They say they did. It's his word against theirs. But that doesn't mean that he's deliberately lying. That might be his honest experience. Um, I don't know. I just think the implications are a bit troubling. Um, now, in other areas, I mentioned I, I've not dealt with Summerfield Brown personally. I never would because... You know, it's fine, as someone put it, it's fine when they want their money and they want, uh, you know, things done their way, then they'll be very quick to respond. But when you want them to take action, then they're slow. Not necessarily that specific firm, but I think there is a trajectory with that. Two companies I've had very bad experiences with no harm. So uh, the electronics retailer, um, Curry's PC World, they have a company called No Harm which is supposed to be the sort of help service. It is absolutely appalling. It's utterly incompetent. It doesn't clarify any problems. And they end up just taking your money and not really fixing a damn thing. So I have problems with my laptop, not this one, the previous one. It was like there was a black screen and it was causing a lot of problems. So I brought it back to this know-how team directly at Curry's PC World. And they fix the problem and then afterwards they told me how they'd done it and it was something very simple that I could have done myself but they charged me for this despite the fact that um, I'd only had this product for at that point I think it was 10 months or something but the point was it was um, it's not like I'd had it for years and I'd you know I'd spilt tea or something on it it just failed but their whole attitude was all about how do we get our money off this guy um, but know how, uh, you know, they they don't respond to requests online. It's something, another one I have a big problem with is the student loans company. They have a Facebook page. Why? 
Why do they bother having a Facebook page when they never ever respond to people? So I've seen a whole string of complaints on their Facebook page saying you never respond to messages. Um, you know, either it's people trying to pay off the student debt because they've got to a point where they can do that, but they're meeting red tape and they're just trying to they're just trying to pay it off, or it's people. Uh, trying to follow up on the threatening letters they've had. I've had a lot of correspondence from a student loans company and it meant me actually having to request. Um, I was getting universal credit at the time and I had to request from the job centre to print out a notification so I could send it to them in Glasgow. I mean, there was a common sense deficit because they wanted me to produce a signed signature, you know, ignoring the fact that there's a pandemic going on and job centres are closed. So I think a lot of companies, another one I can think of, Euro parts, uh, Euro, Euro car parking. This uh, got notoriety recently because they charged £100 to a woman for overstaying by 10 minutes. Now, she was overstaying technically, but the reasoning for this was that she went to the assistance of a man who was having a heart attack. Unfortunately, he died, he died anyway. But they actually had the goal find this woman a hundred pounds even though the cctv footage clearly showed the incident it shows not only an incompetence in terms of you know looking at the information available but a callousness i think companies like this are disgusting where they they boast about what how good they are and yet they they do not make things easy they deliberately put up these brick walls and red tape and bureaucracy it's it's disgusting actually because it puts so much stress through the consumer um no how actually i read one woman who said that some of their personnel turned turned up in a van um i forget the exact story now but it was something about uh giving her a charge for something that they hadn't done properly and, and they just wouldn't um i forget the exact details but Basically, if you can, if you have problems with any software, any laptops, anything like that, through Curry's PC World, do not go through know-how, their so-called self-help service at the polling. And if, don't take my word for it, look at their Facebook page. It's universally bad reviews, universally. Um, if you can, go to an independent repair shop or something, um, or maybe a friend who knows something about computers. And of course, that's difficult during this lockdown. You know, things are easing up now. But th th these are not trivial things because if you're paying money for a service, you expect at least a reasonable level of competence. Um, if I provide a service to someone, you know, um, I teach online. I'm an English tutor. That's one of my part-time jobs. I I don't claim to be the world's best teacher, but the lady that I teach, she pays me money for it. So I try hard to, to be for her. I try to follow up on mistakes that she's making to give her useful feedback. I try and make that time count because that's the job that I'm doing. Now, it's not the same as a company, but I'm getting paid for it. So I've got responsibility to give her her money's worth. Um, I've also recently had experience with another company. Um, I'm a little reluctant to name them here because it's an ongoing process. And I don't want to sort of put myself in a difficult position where they could turn around and say, oh, you made this public and you're defaming us or something. But suffice to say that they are causing me a good bit of stress. Let's just say they're putting me in a limbo that I feel is unnecessary. And I feel I've done everything that's asked of me. Um, it's it's just referring to a job that I've, I'm applying for and it's a long process and um i'm not prepared to go into details just yet uh but looking at other testimonials people have had a similar experience with this company and it's um it's not the company that i'm wanting to work for they are kind of a third party who are responsible for part of the application i'm, I'm being quite vague and sorry about that but i just don't want to sort of implicate myself in some sort of fault situation but um Maybe further down the line, when things are cleared up, then I can be free to talk about this. But I really think that there needs to be um, strengthening of consumer rights. I think 
companies that are consistently inadequate and incompetent. I don't think it's enough to say, oh, well, things will turn around and they'll lose business. That's not necessarily guaranteed because, you know, not everyone will want to switch service automatically. They might be in the middle of a protest. It's, a, it's not that simple to just say, oh, well, they'll lose business. Things will turn around that way. Um, I think they should be accountable. I think that companies that put people through stress and they're too lazy, too um, useless, they even bother replying to people. I'm thinking, why do you bother having a Facebook page? You know, why do you bother having email addresses and so on if you're not going to respond to them? Um, and, you know, some of these people, like I said, it's universal negative feedback. I can understand if it's like some good reviews, some bad reviews. It's just like different experiences. But in the case of know-how, that is literally 100% negative. So I'm thinking... You know, they need to learn something from this. They need to take some of it on board and understand, well, clearly there's a trajectory here. Clearly people are not happy. We need to change the way we approach this. Because, you know, they boast. They boast about what they can do and how, how helpful they are when really they're not. Um, life's stressful enough as it is without sort of adding to it. Um... So yeah, I'm a big believer in consumer rights. And I think that if you are a public company, whether it's a small company or a big company, um, excuse me, whether it's a small company or a big company, if you are not going to listen to negative feedback, if you're just going to get defensive and ignore that completely, then what are you in it for? Are you just in it for profit or do you really want to help people? Um, if I was running a company and like I was getting lots of negative feedback, I'd like to think I would have the humility to say, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. I need to reassess my approach rather than just being defensive and say, oh, they're, they're picking on me or something like that. Because if there's a track record, then there has to be something in it. If you had like nine positive reviews and one negative review, it might be that that person is being too um, too critical too negative. But I do strongly believe that people should have the right to criticize. And, you know, if you, I know, for example, a lot of businesses don't like TripAdvisor because they say that people leave negative reviews and ruin their business. But I take the view, if you're that confident, then you shouldn't be worried about one review or rather just respond to them, just counter their claims as some business owners do. Because of course, people can leave unfair reviews. I get that. And that would be frustrating if you put a lot into a business, time, money, energy, and someone's just exaggerating or they're saying something that's unfair. I could understand that. But I don't, you know, this idea about suing people because they've criticised you, it's like, really, I think you should have the confidence to just report in kind rather than bringing it to court. But yeah, those are uh, student loans company, know-how, um, Euro car parks. Those are some examples. I'm sure there's many others. Um, on the other hand, you get companies, of course, just to leave on a positive note, who deserve the good reputation, who are very helpful. They do care about their clients and their customers, and they will go out of their way to help people. And that's what entrepreneurs and business people should aspire to. If I ever dabble in business, it's certainly something that I would really take seriously because in the end of the day it's in their interest anyway um let me know your thoughts